Hallmark Channel. Welcome back. My next guest might just have the recipe for a successful franchise, and it's all thanks to the great Aussie meat pie. Six years ago, he left the world of fashion to take on fast food, and Pie Face was born. The recognisable brand now boasts 19 stores across the country. So just what are the ingredients for a healthy franchise? Let's find out with the CEO of Pie Face, Wayne Homshek. Wayne, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Now, you were in the fashion business. Why did you go from that to making pies, which there must be so many people in Australia who make the Aussie meat pie. Um, actually, there's, yeah, there's quite a few doing it on a small scale, but no one was really doing it on a large scale. Uh, we had a designer fashion business called Pablo Nevada, and it was very much a niche business. And uh, my partner and I decided that we wanted to do something more mainstream that would appeal to the masses. Uh, and food seemed to be something that, you know, related to everyone. Um, and we had this great idea for putting faces on pie, so we decided to exploit that, that idea. Okay, so what is the concept? What was your idea and then how did it come about? Well, firstly, we wanted to do something in food because we thought it was a business that could be scaled. Um, and we looked around various segments of the industry and we thought that the QSR, or the fast food segment, was where there was most value to be created. And no one was doing meat pies in bakery cafe in a very meaningful way in Australia. You know, people do hamburgers, pizza, lots of other things. And so we decided to do something in Bakery Cafe with, um, with the meat pie as kind of the focus. Um, and we needed a clever name and a clever idea. And we, um, we thought for months and months, actually. And the night before we signed our first lease, we were sitting at a restaurant in Bondi Beach. And uh, I said to my, my partner, a friend of mine suggested pie face in kind of a quirky <laughs> way. And she immediately started drawing faces on the, on the tablecloth. And from that moment, we, we knew we had a very clever idea, which was the face would represent the flavor. So if you look at the mouth of our pies, it tells you what the flavor is, whether it be C for chicken or S for steak or V for so veggie. So the actual mouth changes. We can see just uh, in those shots some of the drawings. Yeah, exactly. The, the mouth changes for whatever it is. Yeah, it's it all is. in the mouth. The eyes are always content and closed. And that's in pastry on the lid of the pie, the exactly. top of the pie. Exactly, yeah. And we now have sort of perfected that in a, in a production sense. So we can produce those, you know, pretty quickly and pretty efficiently. In a sense though, was it simply a gimmick or did you actually have, you know, a real idea behind that? Well, we just liked, I mean, we, we come from fashion and we were sort of clever in marketing and things and we just thought this idea was so powerful that once we had the idea, we decided to build a whole business and format around that. So from the pie, we then built a, um, sandwiches, coffee, pastries, and, and really we built the whole business model around that one idea. You are pushing the fact that uh, you, you actually talk about the fresh, very nutritious ingredients, you tell people what's in them, mm -hmm. which of course I guess is one thing that the Aussie meat pie has always been a bit of a mystery, nobody really knows what's in it and you know, and that can frighten away consumers. Yeah, I think there's two, two markets really, you have your sort of you know, sort of low-end, sort of mass-marketed, you know, frozen grocery store sort of product, and then you have your gourmet product. And I think there, you know, there are plenty of places that will sell you an, an eight or nine or ten-dollar pie. In fact, if you go to the boathouse, I think in uh, what, uh, in um, Sydney here, you can buy a forty-dollar snapper pie. So there's definitely a, a wide range of sort of you know, qualities and... Yes, and but so do you think um, consumers don't question what's in a gourmet pie just because it is gourmet? Or do you still think they think, mmm, I wonder what is in all that gravy? Well, it's funny because we're opening a store in the new Sydney airport, in the food court, uh, next month. And literally across the backdrop of the wall, in the, in the, we actually have every ingredient listed <coughs> that we put in our products. So we have, you know, chemical-free chicken, you know, the herbs, all the things that we put in, whole butter. So we've literally listed everything that goes into our pies so that if you're in doubt as to what's in there, you'll actually be able to see it. Fantastic. Did the franchising idea come up, that was your original idea because you have been an investment banker, mm -hmm. or was it, did it just grow kind of organically, pardon the pun, out of the success of the pie business? Look, um, Australia is a great market for franchising. Most food Why? chains, well, I'm not sure, well, one of the reasons why is the cost of labor here in terms of employing people, especially in the food service industry, is almost prohibitive. Um, the cost of a, you know, having a more than a $600,000 annual salary means you pay payroll tax, for instance. You've got super loading. You've got a whole lot of on costs here that say you don't have in America. 
the minimum wage in America in, in quick service is something like six, seven dollars. Here it's something like seventeen, eighteen dollars. Same in the UK, it's a, it's a much lower um, minimum wage. So here, by default, most chains are franchised because owner operators tend to run a much leaner business. They don't have the payroll tax threshold. They tend to use family members. Um, so you'll find that most food chains here, such as Subway, even McDonald's, most of them are franchised. The one exception was Starbucks, and of course they closed 60 odd stores out of 80. Uh, and they were a company-owned chain. So there is definitely an advantage in franchising. And, and you know, not only is it the, the savings on the labor, but it's the fact that you have people who have a vested stake in their business, their owner-operators. Um, they tend to really, you know, really pay attention. Um, and up until recently, we had a labor shortage here, so it was even more challenging as a company-owned model. How do you determine, I guess, your success. I mean, you've grown very quickly since what 2003. Yep. How big are you, and do you um, gather sales figures, even though it's franchise? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we're still predominantly company-owned. We're only really just launching our franchise program uh, last month or two. So, for the first five years, we literally built, owned, and operated the whole system. All right. So those 19 stores are owned by we, you. Yeah, we actually just started selling some of them as franchises, okay. but we own them to start with. All right, now pie franchises, as we understand, maybe don't have such a great track record. Why do you think you can make yours successful? Well, because we're a bakery cafe chain. We're a micro bakery cafe chain. Uh, your traditional pie shop in Australia is a pie warmer filled with pies and a Pepsi machine, a Pepsi or a Coke, you know, vending machine, and that's about it. What we are is a bakery cafe chain. So but we're there are so many cafes in Australia. Yeah, but. Um, not on a large scale, you know, and not using the meat pie as its focus. So, um, Michelle's Patisserie is an example. They're a, they're a large 350 store chain. They had the meat pie as one of their key areas, but it wasn't their their focus. So, so there are examples of you know people that have done it, but predominantly in meat pies, it hasn't been done in a, in a large way. And, and when you get to the U.S. or Europe, it's really not done at all. And we think there's potential for it over there. All right, what sort of sales are you doing in figures? Well, our average store now is about 700,000 per annum. The average cost of building a store is about 250. Um, our average payback period, if you're a franchisee, is somewhere around two and a half years, say, on average. Um, okay, I want to talk briefly about your website because it's actually a really fun website. Mm. I, I've, I've had a look at it and I think we've got some pictures here. Yeah. The, um, the cursor, as you can see, it turns into a pencil and you can actually, uh, well, on, on another page, you can draw your own faces on the pies. Here exactly. we go. Yeah, there you can actually go on the website, draw your own face, submit it to us, and we pick six, six winners every two weeks and we send you a voucher for free free food if you're one of the winners. That's fantastic because what I was going to say is why put all that fabulous creative effort into a website when you really want people to buy pies in your stores? Well because it's, it's, it's about the brand you know it's, it's not only the quality of the product but it's about the experience and what we find is, you know people of all ages kids kids love the concept older people love the concept people like to relate to the brand I mean Starbucks is a great brand people think of Starbucks they have a certain feeling about it so the more we can sort of you know, engender that feeling with, with our customers, the better. And uh, if we're going to do something, we like to do it creatively. It's, it's a really interesting site because it actually looks very fresh. So it reflects, I presume, what you're saying about the ingredients in your pies. Yeah. I mean, our concept is that we have, you know, individual pies for individual people. And the faces are hand drawn on the pies. And therefore, when you go to the website, it only makes sense that you could draw the similar things, you know, yourself. So. Fantastic. Wayne Homshek, we'll leave it there, but best of luck. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. And that's it for us tonight. If you want more Switzer, check Peter's website, switzer.com.au. And if you've got any questions for me or ones you'd like to be put to an expert, please email switzer at skynews.com.au. I'm Helen Daly. Peter Switzer will be back next week. Thanks for watching.